Welcome back everyone to Learning by Teaching. Today we're in Dynamics and we're going to solve problem 13.66, okay? It says, a motorcyclist in a circus rides his motorcycle within the confines of the hollow sphere. If the coefficient of static friction between the wheels of the motorcycle and the sphere is mu equal to 0 0.4, determine the minimum speed at which he must travel if he is to ride along the wall when theta is equal to 90 degrees. The mass of the motorcycle and the rider is 250 kilograms, and the radius of curvature to the center of gravity is rho equal to 25th. Neglect the size of the motorcycle for the calculation. All right, so what we can see here in this figure, guys, is that we have this motorcycle going in this um, hole of sphere, and what we need to determine is the speed, the minimum speed at which he should travel in order to uh, keep driving around the wall okay so like always I like to write my givens for this type of problem so I have I'm gonna write my givens and what do I have first they're giving me the coefficient of static friction which is equal to 0 0.4 then they're telling me that my angle theta is equal to 90 degrees and this angle theta is here so it's basically my angle from my horizontal to this basically vertical line because it's a 90 degrees okay the mass of the motorcycle rider so we got that the mass is equal to 250 kilograms and they're giving us the radius of curvature where it's equal to 20 feet okay now for this problem i'm going to assume that it's not 20 feet and it's a mistake by the book and it's going to be 20 meters i will explain that a little bit later so let's keep that in mind that I'll explain later with respect to the book. Now, uh, in order to solve this problem, guess what? Well, we're going to do a free body diagram like all these problems require. So we're going to draw a free body diagram and we're going to do a free body diagram of our motorcycle rider. So I'm going to simplify our motorcycle rider by our square box now i will have a downward force that i'm going to call the weight then i will have an upward force that is going to be the friction between my tires and our wall okay so since i'm moving in this direction my frictional force wants to counter and therefore it goes up and my frictional force i'm going to call it ff next i also have the normal force between the tires and the wall so we got the normal force and I think those are the only forces I have just to clarify I'm going to add that I also have an acceleration normal going um, inside to our radius of curvature okay and this is our normal acceleration so to clarify a little bit with respect to our coordinates I'm going to say okay my normal acceleration therefore is going to the right therefore this is my normal axis and my vertical axis is going to be I'm going to call it transverse okay so T for transverse so now that we have our free body diagram we're going to do summatorial forces let's start with our summatorial forces in the normal direction this should be equal to my mass times mass, uh, my acceleration in the normal direction so what forces do I have in the normal well I have my normal force n and nothing else so this should be equal to my mass times my acceleration normal now what do we recall about our previous chapters is that our normal acceleration is also my velocity square divided by my curvature my radius of curvature okay so if we replace the numbers we know that m is equal to 250 kilograms and then we're multiplying by velocity square and divided it by our 20 and I'm going to assume meters for this case so now we have um, we can simplify this so we're going to have 250 divided by 20 and this will give me 12.5 and this is in kilograms per meter and also let's recall that we have a velocity square in here so that's all I can do because I don't know my normal force and I don't know my velocity either. I don't know my V square. 
So I'm going to have that my summatory of forces, in this case in my transfer direction, is going to be equal to my mass times my acceleration in the transfer direction, okay? Now, what happened is that we don't have a, an acceleration in the transfer direction. Therefore, all this right side is going to be equal to zero. Now, from the free body diagram, what forces do we have? Well, I'm going to assume that going up is positive, Therefore, I have positive my frictional force minus my weight has to be equal to zero. Now, what do we know about frictional force from statics is that friction is fun, meaning that our friction is equal to my mu times n. And then we'll have minus w. w is going to be my mass times gravity, and this should be equal to zero. We're going to plug in the numbers. We got 0 0.4 for my static friction coefficient multiplied by my normal force minus my mass, which is equal to 250 kilograms, multiplied by 9.81 meters per second square. And this is equal to zero. Okay, so now we're going to solve for n. So we're going to say that n is going to be equal to 250 multiplied by 9.81 divided by 0 0.4. And what are the units? Well, the units of kilograms times meter per second square will give me a total of newtons. And since my static coefficient doesn't have uh, units, it just stays like newtons. And if we plug this into our calculator, let's see how much we get. 250 times 9. 0.81 divided by 0 0.4 gives me a total of 6,131.25 newtons. All right, so we just found that my normal force is equal to 6,100 and something newtons. Now we're going to utilize this equation, the one that we got in here, in order to find our velocity. So we're going to say that 6,131.25 has to be equal to 12.5 V squared. And let's recall that from our right side, our left side, first of all, we got newtons. And from our right side, we got kilograms per meter. And the reason why I'm carrying all these units is because I believe that the book either made some error with this unit or um, they... Uh, or I made an error. So let's check it out. So we have that our velocity squared is going to be equal to 6,131.25 divided by 12.5. On top we got newtons. At the bottom we have kilogram per meter. And if we do the units of this, we have newtons, which is kilogram times meter per second square and at the bottom we have kilogram over meter so we will cancel kilogram with kilograms and we will end up having a total of meter square per second square which are the units of velocity square right so i believe that for that reason this this unit has to be in meters which was the reason why we have this 20 as meters okay so my velocity, if we solve for velocity and do the square root of this fraction, we will get a total of 22.1 meters per second, which is in SI units. Okay? And since I'm pretty sure you guys will think, well, well maybe your answer is just wrong. It's not 22.1. So I am checking the answers from the book. And my velocity for this problem, 1366, is equal to 22.1, okay? So, I hope you guys liked the video. Please push the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next